Episode 9, the Photon Podcast. You've got questions. I've got opinions. I'm going to share them with you next. This is K4CD, and stay tuned for the podcast. AmateurRadio15.com presents Photime, the other ham radio podcast, sponsored by Main Trading Company. Find them online at mtcradio.com. Now, here's your host, Kale Nelson, K4CDN. Hey, hey, welcome in to episode number nine of the Photime podcast. I am Kale, your host. Thanks for tuning in again. Uh, most especially, thank you for telling your friends about the podcast, uh, for liking the podcast on Facebook or whatever, following us on Twitter, connecting with us in the social media realm, because that's where almost everybody is. And that's the easiest way for me and for you, the fan of the podcast, to share what we've got going on here with the others out there. All right. Speaking out there, out there in Texas, in Paris, Texas, matter of fact, is a little place called Main Trading Company. They happen to be the show sponsor, and I want to tell you just a couple of things about them this, this time through. October the 18th, 2014, they're having Ham Radio Day in Paris, Texas. It's like, a, it's like the time where Main Trading basically takes over the entire city, and it becomes a great big ham fest, ham radio party in Paris, Texas. Now, I'm going to be in Birmingham, Alabama, so I can't make it all the way out there which kind of stinks because I'm going to be halfway there from here and still can't get there. And why is that such a big deal? Well, beyond just getting to hang out with Christian Richard, which will be a lot of fun, maybe taking some sights in and picking up some gear, they're going to be giving away some stuff that makes it worth your while if you can get there in a reasonable amount of time. And I'm talking about even driving maybe a day's worth of drive to get there. I mean, they're giving away a Kenwood TS990. And a lot of new guys listening, you don't know what that is. It's real simple. It's a freaking $8,000 ham radio. Okay, they're going to give one away. Don't know how they're going to do it. They're giving one away. If you can make it out there for Ham Radio Day, check out mtcradio.com for all the details. They've still got their new ham packages. Christy said that she will cater your package to fit your needs, especially for a new guy. So if you have some needs, call them. They want to help you get on the air, okay? Christy and Richard Lenore from Main Trading Company are the folks you need to be chatting with if you need some gear. All right, so the other day I changed the uh, the question on the phone line. If you're a new ham or want to be ham or you, you have some questions about what's going on in ham radio, please leave us a message here in the mailbox, and Kel's going to try to answer it to the best of his ability. And we got a couple of calls. I'm going to share them with you. We're going to start with this one. This call's from John. John, take it away. Hi, this is John. Um, I'm just calling to put a question on top of your question. Um, I'm new to the idea of ham radio. So what do all these things mean that you're asking, that you're talking about on your podcast? So I guess in the end, I'm kind of wondering for the new people out there that are curious, that run across people promoting your podcast on forums across the, you know, the world, um, could you maybe do a special episode, a, another fireside chat with Uncle Kale that would explain what ham radio is, what's FM, what's, what's DX, what is 2 meter, what is 40 meter, and what's a good you know, small unit for someone to start out with, even if they don't broadcast for them to just get into it and listen to what's going on out there. I mean, are the little handhelds okay? Or do you need a little bit bigger base unit? What, where do you go? What do you do? How do you start? How do you even find somebody in your area that is a ham operator that you can go hang out with? Um, just some general questions like this. And you're doing a great job. You have a great sound quality. Really enjoy listening to your podcast. Um, Good luck, dude. <laughs> bye bye. John, first off, thank you very much for the compliments. I appreciate that. Uh and and that's following the conversation that Ed and I had from Afghanistan to South Carolina where the sound quality was less than stellar on my end especially. 
But uh, thank you, and thank you for listening. We know that you've been listening a while, John, because your questions are pertinent to the information that we've covered since the beginning, and they're not just out there. So thanks, guys. John has been paying attention, as you can tell. He had a list of questions that he has been thinking through in his mind. All right, uh, what does it all mean? I'm I'm guessing here, John, you're asking me, what are all these these uh, abbreviations and this jargon you're using? We'll cover that in a couple of minutes uh, because – like anything else, it's a really deep matter, and it's kind of an on-the-job training, but we'll cover that. What does it all mean in just a couple of minutes with another call? But uh, the first question, what is ham radio? And uh, I'm going to go to the ARRL.org website, and they are the Amateur Radio Relay League. Okay, They're an advocacy group for the protection of the operating spectrum of amateur radios, Okay, and they're their definition of amateur radio is as follows, quote, Amateur radio, or ham radio, is a popular hobby and service in which licensed amateur radio operators, or hams, operate communications equipment. Ta-da! That, that's pretty much it. We're a group of individuals who have been licensed through their countries, because this is a worldwide hobby, through their countries' governments, and we're given permission to operate our radios in the confines of the permission slip that they grant us. Ham radio basically is a communications hobby. And um, guys who like to talk, and even guys who don't like to talk, and it's not just guys, it's ladies as well. But that's what that's what amateur radio is. Um, what is FM? It's a way that we operate. It's a way that um, we we operate mainly locally. We, our, our radios that operate locally within our area of operations we live in or maybe work in or drive through or something like that uh, we use repeaters which takes our signal and repeats it out for others to hear from a higher location with more power um, so it spreads our signal further so we can talk to someone on the other side of town or in the other county or if we're connected through a linked repeater system all over the state say in pennsylvania if you ever listen to a police scanner and you've heard the police dispatcher and the police officer talking to each other the fire departments or whatever Got really good fidelity. You can hear both ends of the signal really well, and they sound like they're in the same room together. That's FM. Okay, AM. You've 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 maybe talked on a CB radio before or had a a handheld walkie-talkie when you were a kid. You know that put a nine volt battery in. You could still talk to someone, but it was a little maybe a little more scratchy sounding. The sound quality wasn't there. The fidelity wasn't there. That's AM. If you've ever listened to uh, your shortwave radio and you've tuned in one of the nets where the ham radio operators were going, and uh, I don't say it was any any more scratchy, but it was just uh, the signal was maybe a little leaner, and I'm saying that in air quotation marks, a little leaner. That's uh, that's operating with single sideband. So um, I hope that it doesn't confuse you too much, but kind of gives you an idea of what I'm trying to say there. You ask about what is DX. DX is simply operating, listening to, communicating with, listening for the station in the distance. More generally, an out-of-country station. If you're in the U.S. and you hear someone in France, that's a DX reception. If you have a communications with them, that's a DX contact, okay, or a QSO, which is another abbreviation. I don't think we'll get there, okay? DX is a distant Country communications. I'm sorry my chickens are having fun in the background there. Uh, I live on a farm, right? So if you're talking local, that's local. If you're talking DX, you're out of the country. All right, that's DX. Now, John also asked about 2 meters and 40 meters. 2 meters is a, a slice of the spectrum, the radio spectrum that we, and I say we, amateur radios operators, amateur radio operators use for more more than anything else, we use it for local communications, and it's probably the most popular band that we communicate on. Okay, it's what our repeaters are connected to. I mean, of course, we have, I'm going to get some more stuff here, 440, 220, all of that. We have other repeaters and other bands, but the two meters is a band that we use for local communications, as well as long-distance communications, if you like, on single sideband, which I'm, I'm not trying to confuse you. Uh, just think two meters is really similar to the police and fire dispatch that you hear in most small communities. Okay, uh, forty meters is another slice. Well, let me go, let me go back to two meters real quick. It's one hundred and forty-four through one hundred and forty-eight megahertz. 
All right, that's where you'll find it on the radio dial in the spectrum, 144 to 148 megahertz. Okay, like our local repeater here in the upstate of South Carolina is 147.315 megahertz. All right, 40 meters is uh, another slice of the band that we're allotted, that we're given permission to speak on if we have a general class license, and that is the 7 megahertz band. Okay, like 7.0 through 7.3. I believe my band plan's not in front of me. What an idiot. So anyway, it's a 7, 7 7.0 megahertz, okay? So when you're looking to talk to someone uh, on HF, which is not AM, okay, which you're using like single sideband, and you're trying to make a contact, it's a good local, good local, I'm talking about... um, you know, a couple of states worth. I mean, you can talk around the world on it. I'm not saying it won't go that far, but a lot of people use it for close in type HF communications. All right. I've got, a, a, I've got a group of listeners here just scratching your head saying, wow, well, Kel, I would have said that so differently. That's cool, man. I didn't say I was the smartest guy. I said I had some opinions and I'm trying to share them here with John. All right. What's a good starter unit? Now this will get rocks thrown at me, uh, tomatoes and, and tar and feathers if they could get close i'm going to say the best starter unit for you john is the one that you can afford what what can you afford and what will serve your needs best within that that uh, budget when i started out a few years ago the 35 five dollar walkie talkies did not exist the less or the least expensive unit was about a hundred bucks and it was by a company named Oshin. They still manufacture them. You can still buy them from Main Trading Company and other places. They're great walkie-talkies. I've had mine. I've used mine as a walkie-talkie. I've used it as a mobile unit in the truck. I used it as a base station for about six months when it was all that I had. It was 100 bucks. It was about all I could afford, and it served me really well. Nowadays, you can go and buy a walkie-talkie for 35 bucks, and it'll serve you pretty good. Now, is it going to be as tough as nails? Can you drop it from the roof? Can you go out and accidentally dip it in the in the creek or something? Probably not. But for thirty five bucks, you can get on the air. All right, there's some better units. Okay, really, the the base model, the starter rigs, the the Balfang, the Pofung. Um, that's your, your bottom end, the UV five R the UV B five, which is my favorite bottom end radio, the Balfang UV B five or five B I'm dyslexic. I'll put a link in the show notes, but it's the one that looks different than the one that everybody else buys. I think it's a better radio personally, and you can find some, you can find some opinions to back that up as well. So, I mean, if you've got a five R and it works for you, I'm happy for you. Okay, you want to spend maybe four dollars more and buy the other one? Go ahead, UV five B. That's the one I like. Okay, um, those are your bottom end. Okay, you can go up to UV eighty two by Balfang. You get a, a wonky kind of push to talk. I don't really like it myself personally. My fingers don't work that way. The push to talk either you press the top and you talk on one frequency. You press the bottom, talk on the other. That may work for everyone on the country in the country, but me. But it doesn't, so I, I'm just not real crazy about it. You go from there, the Oshin rigs, and that's actually spelled W. What is it? W O X U N. It doesn't look like it sounds, but it's a Chinese word. So what do we? You know, they don't sound like I do either. I like those. I've got a couple of them, and I've had very good service out of them. I haven't broken them. They've always worked for me, and and I like I. The funny thing is I bought one from one guy years ago, and I just recently in the last couple of years bought one from Maine Trading Company before we started the partnership here on the show, and they've got them. They've got them that operate on all different bands, and you can find them at mtcradio.com. Um, I, I'll put links to all these different models on the on the show notes for you there. You go up from there, probably people are going to If you ask that question, Probably, more than likely, the answer that'll come back every time, which HT should I buy to start with? And I'm going to give you the same advice. If you can afford it, okay? If you can afford it and you like the Yezu brand, buy the FT60. Yezu FT60. I mean, it's bulletproof. It's been around for quite a while. It works every time you want it to work. It's dual band. 
the display just displays a single band, but who cares? Um, it's a great radio, and it probably has more followers than any other radio, handheld radio in the country. Another great one is an ICOM, um, an ICOM Sport. I think it's a, a Model 80. Again, we'll link to them here. MTC Radio sells those. Uh, a lot of people like them because you can put a – it comes with the battery pack that you can put AA batteries in. So if you didn't have a battery or the power was out, you could use that external battery pack. That's actually – I've got an older model, one of those. Like, I think I've got a 70 in my get-home bag. So it's a, it's a great radio by ICOM. Um, but the FT60, if you can afford a $170 radio, buy that one. And they're also available – the um, the the Baofeng, the Oshins, the Yezus are available in the um, Photime web store. If you guys want to shop with me, it helps pay the bills. I'd really appreciate it. All right, the base stations. Do you need a base station? Well, I mean, John, it depends on where you live, how far away you are, who you want to talk to, um, how well you want to talk to be able to talk to people. There, there's a whole, uh, there's like a, a big rift here in amateur radio. A lot of people say, hey, man, you want to get started, go buy the $35 walkie-talkie just to get on the air. And I'm not saying I'm not a proponent of that because I kind of am. And then there's another subsection of guys who say, no, whatever you do, whatever you do, buy a base station first, learn how to use it in your house, hook it up on the, to a base antenna, learn how to press the buttons. That makes plenty of sense to me so you're not fumbling buttons in the truck going down the road, okay? Plus it gives you... You know, a clear signal into your local repeaters. You can talk um, simplex, which means without repeaters from station to station, better with a more powerful radio and a better antenna. Um, so the, if I were going to buy a base station for local communications and I were starting out, what would I buy? Well, it'd be one of two things. I've got one, and if I didn't have it, I'd probably buy the other. The one that I have is the Kenwood TM281, Tango Mary-281. It's a great radio. There's probably two things people don't like about it. Number one, it doesn't have a squelch button. You, you use the menu feature to get to the squelch. And number two, it doesn't have a very low power setting. Past that, it does have an amazing, amazing front-firing speaker. So if you have a loud diesel truck like I do, it works really well in there. Or a lot of kids in the loud diesel truck like I do, it works really well. Uh, past that, the front-firing front firing speaker is one of my favorite options on the radio. And the fact that it is a Kenwood, I can unplug the microphone, plug it into my other radios here in the shack. I'm I'm just a Kenwood fanboy. Okay, that's what I started with. For some reason, it's what I got, and it's what works for me. All right. The other one that I would recommend is the Yezu, again, FT-1900. All right, the 1900 has like three or four power settings. It has a, a squelch button on the front. It's been around for a while. I, years ago, before I had my license, I actually had an 1802, I believe it was which is the predecessor of the 1900 now. It's a great little radio. You can find them pretty inexpensively. I have them in the Photime web store. Uh, you can find them all over the place at your local ham retailers or the online retailers. FT-1900, hard to beat radio. I'm telling you, if, if I weren't a Kenwood guy who liked just having the redundancy of sharing microphones and power cables and different things like that, I would probably have the 1900 again although I had an 1800, but it's a great radio. Okay. And it's got a very low power setting. Well, why is that important? Well, let's say the power's out and you, for a, a, an extended amount of time, and you want to be able to use your radio and you're running off a battery. Okay. The lower power setting, it, be, it becomes more of like a walkie talkie, just sipping power. Okay. Uh, but then you can uh, still transmit for a, a very long time because your transmissions are, are taking less power as well. So the lower power setting is a really nice feature to have on that radio. So I would say if you want to get started, those are the two to choose from. Icom makes, I think it's an 8800, has a lot of fans built to mil-spec standards, as is the Kenwood, um, but I've never used it. And I like the Kenwood, and then I like the Yesu. Uh, there's one more that just left my mind, which I guess is not important. But, oh, the 2900, the FT2900 by Yesu. It's a 75-watt radio. It's built to put in your M1 Abrams if you drive one of those. I mean, it's it's seriously tough. It costs a little bit more than the 1900. It's it's basically a heat sink with a radio built onto it. It's it's pretty sick. So even, even that said, these radios aren't that large. They're not going to take up a whole lot of space in your car or your truck. So uh, give them all a look. They're all good radios, okay? The Yesus, the Kenwoods, and the Icoms are all good radios. 
if you want to spend and you can spend some more money. Now, you're going to have to have an antenna either on your car or your house, and uh, that's a whole other show, okay, a whole other show. But if you've got questions, um, we've got stuff like this listed in the Photon Web Store. We have it under mobile and base stations. We have a, a link for handy talkies or walkie talkies. We also have antennas that go with those, so we can kind of direct you there. If you don't like doing it that way, call call Richard and Christy at mtcradio.com, and they can help you get down the road there. Now, where do you go? What am I going to do? You, you've told me a little bit about, and you've confused me a lot, but still, I, I'm still listening, Kale, and I want to know where to go. Well, I want to take you back to the ARRL website, okay? ARRL.org. I know there's some of you guys that are laughing when I say that. It's just how I say the letter R, okay? ARRL.org. And It's the advocacy group for amateur radio. It's also the place that you can go and find out just about everything you need to know about amateur radio. Probably less confusingly than I'm giving it to you right now. But if you go there, there's all kind of links for new guys and new gals. One of them is the local club finder. That's where you need to go. You need to find your local club. And you find it there on the website. You find out when they're meeting. You can send one of the guys an email. If they've got a phone number, you can call them. See when they meet. Go sit in on a couple of their meetings. That way, you're gonna you're gonna find out what works for everybody in your local area. Okay, how things operate, what type of repeaters they have. Do they talk on two meters or four forty locally? And that way, kind of help you decide which way to, you know to get your walkie talkie or your handheld or your base station going. Um, you know, it, they'll they'll be probably be able to direct you to a testing session. They may even be holding testing sessions there at your local club that you can participate in and after you've studied. So uh, find your local club. It's on the ARRL website. Of course, the link's going to be in the show notes. Find them. Contact them. Good luck. I know not all of them are as great as mine. And although my local club doesn't listen to my podcast, you know, familiarity breeds contempt, whatever, I still love the guys, and they they're great. They've been great for me as a as a newer ham, and we've got we've got uh, members upward to ninety four, ninety five years old, all the way down to high schoolers, and it's it's a it's a great combination of people. I, I hope that you have a great club in your area as well. A lot of larger metropolitan areas will have more than one club, so if you go to one, you don't really like the vibe, check out another one. If you're like me, we've got one. You don't like it, you're kind of on your own. <laughs> Not that we push anybody out. How do you start? Well, you got to take a test, which means you have to study. It's not really hard. I promise you, it's not really hard. Um, Nothing against 13-year-old females, but when I took my general upgrade, there were two 13-year-old twins, females, in the testing session that tested and passed their technician license test together. It was really cool because both their parents were licensed and the girls came and were licensed as Pass their test all the same. It's kind of a big party, but it was cool. You know, I mean, not many thirteen-year-old girls are are interested in amateur radio, but for whatever reason, they did it. They they passed, and it was really exciting to see that. I know there are six, seven, eight-year-old kids that take and pass the test. That don't bother me. It doesn't bother me at all. If they can pass a test, give them a license. Okay, they've got parents, grandparents, uncles, or whatnot that can help them operate on the air as they mature. Um, We'll talk about testing in a little bit and how to study. We'll get to that in a couple of minutes with a different call. And lastly, how do I find somebody that will let me come over, hang out with them, and, and teach me what to do? Well, we call that person in ham speak here, they're called an Elmer. And I don't know why it's an Elmer. I don't know. Maybe years ago there was an old dude named Elmer, and he helped somebody, and they said, well, I want you to be my Elmer. I don't, I, I don't know. There's probably some history to it. I've just, I had a great granddaddy named Elmer, and thank God they didn't think we needed to carry that namesake forth if you're named elmer i'm sorry um i like being kill uh an elmer is what you need and where do you find an elmer you find an elmer at your local club we just covered that find your local club arrl.org club finder there'll be a link find your local club they may even have someone they'll assign to you i just kind of grabbed a couple of different guys who were like-minded and when we became buddies and they elmered me and they still do they still answer the phone when i call sometimes so there you go. John, I hope those answered your questions. And if if you guys didn't like the way I answered his questions, I'm sorry. But uh, like I said, you've got questions. I've got opinions. Back in just a minute, we're going to have another call here on the Photon Podcast. Visit mtcradio.com today. A great one-stop mom-and-pop shop 
for everything ham radio. Radios, antennas, power supplies, wire and cable, books and training materials, microphones, headsets, and accessories. Find popular brands like MFJ, Heil Sound, Jetstream, LDG, Alenco, Comet, Texas Bugcatcher, Radio Waves, and more. MTCRadio.com, an authorized Kenwood and Icom dealer. MTCRadio.com. Hello, Carol. My name is William, and I'm new to the ham hobby. I was wondering if you could tell me why amateur radio folks are called hams. Um, I'm also wondering what would be the benefits of upgrading from a technician license to a general. Thanks. I'm really enjoying the show. Have a good one. Well, thanks, William. Wow, here's one of those questions that's really hard to answer, but uh, you can go a long way to say the same thing. Why do we call amateur radio operators ham radio operators well the easy the easy answer to that is we really don't know there's three or four different school of thoughts with different opinions that nobody uh can really nail down because it's such an old hobby uh they think there's the the i guess the larger consensus believes that years ago as the uh, spectrum was growing out and well the spectrum's always been there but as the hobby was growing out along with the uh, the commercial and amateur, everybody was kind of on the same frequencies and fighting over who was going to talk over who. You know, kind of like CB radio nowadays. Uh, the, if the if the operator was less than stellar in this in his operating capacity, they they said it was ham fisted, and this was back when everyone was you know doing Morse code. They say it was ham fisted, which meant like he was hitting his key with a what in my mind I think of a big you know, but yes, yeah, a whole other thing, but. Like a cartoon character is how it, you know, in my mind it is. I know that it's not really that way, but it said that they're, you know, they just could not operate the Morse code paddle or the uh, the straight key would be what they would be using, I guess. And uh, it was almost a derogatory term. Well, probably the the story goes is that uh, the amateurs didn't realize they were being derogatory towards them, so they decided, oh yes, I'm a ham radio operator, and that's where that came from. Going back to the ARRL website, you know, and this is a, sorry, this is a reminder that I haven't paid my dues for this year, so I need to get that taken care of. Um, as the years advance, the original meaning has completely disappeared. So <laughs> we don't know. I do know one thing about ham radio. I do know this. A lot of times you see it written, especially by folks who are not an amateur radio operator who, who don't have their license or whatnot. Um, you'll see them write the, um, the word ham in all capital letters, like it's an abbreviation for something. It isn't. It doesn't mean Hotel Alpha Mary. Uh, it, you know, it's just ham radio. It's a nickname. You know, it's, that's all it is. It's just a nickname. So if you write ham, you can capitalize the H if you want to, but the A and the M doesn't have to be capitalized. We are amateur radio operators. We are ham radio operators, and we really don't know why. That's just what they call us. Now, William asked, why do we upgrade? Man, why would you not? That's what I always say. It gives you so much more opportunity to make contacts. It opens up all the different bands that are allotted to amateur radio operators here in the States. Uh, it gives you not not every bit of the spectrum that they're allowed because that's reserved for the generals, I mean the, the extras. But from technicians to general, you really get a, a large swath of, of what's available. So, um, I mean, with your tech, you can use a little bit of 10 meters. Okay. And you may catch some DX there, especially on a, you know, a contest day or something. But if you have your general license, you've got access to all the bands and all the modes. And it just, it's kind of like going from, you know, you had a 73 Pinto, which, you know, will get you back and forth to school. But, you upgrade to, you know, like a Z06 or something Corvette, and it'll get you to school really quick, and it's a lot cooler. Not that techs aren't cool, guys. I'm just saying you get a lot more frequency operability. You can talk so many different places 
in so many different ways, it's well worth the test. And it's really not much more to learn than what you've already learned for your technician. So let me stop right there and let me just toss this in here real quick. Uh, when you study for your ham radio license and you go to a testing session, you're going to pay about 15 bucks to take the test. When you do that, okay, if you pass the tech test, you can take the general test right there and not have to pay another 15 bucks. Now, if you fail, you have to pay another 15 bucks and test again. But if you if you pass, you can keep testing until you fail. So uh, just like we talked to Dan a few episodes ago, he went in and took his tech, passed it, took his general, passed it, took his extra, passed it, and walked out from a hero to a zero with with his extra license. He, you know, there's nothing else he can do. He's he's got the top the top ticket, so you can do that. You, you study, you study. It's not that big of a deal. We're going to talk about ways to study in a couple of minutes. But if you're a tech now and you're into the hobby, or you you want to get more into the hobby, the technician is a good way to get you get your feet wet to get a taste of you know talking on the radio, kind of getting some. Um, understanding of how to talk back and forth to someone if you haven't ever worked in the public you know uh, public service field or anything like that or been in the military so technician's a great way to get started but it's just it's just a very small slice of the pie and the general will open that up so much further to you and i don't want to take away from the from the extras as well uh, I, I need to be studying for my extra i have studied some but uh, i decided to take my time and devote it to a podcast so there goes my extra license. William, thanks for your call. I hope it makes sense, man. Um, if you're licensed already, the general's not that much further to go. But what it will allow you to do is so far above and better than where you're at right now, operating-wise, the capacity. It's, uh, it's well worth it. All right, up next, we have our last call for the episode, Rob called in rob's got a list of questions too i love it these guys are listening they're they're making notes they're trying to figure this thing out and i appreciate it i hope this is helping you guys some rob take it away hi my name is rob um, my contact is joe on facebook i'm brand new and i had some questions or some podcast ideas um, for beginners um i have three four questions something like that um first one is is there a glossary um, of all the different acronyms to learn. Um, question two, I downloaded an app to study the question pool, but I understand the question pool has changed. What's the best way to study for my first license? And three, from the short time I've listened to your podcast, I understand there are many ways to get involved text, high frequency, QRP, rescue work, um, et cetera. Um, could you have a show covering the different areas and links to find out more about the different um, ways I could get involved in ham radio? And the last one, um, my dad was in ham back in 1979, 1980, what, in, in, around that time frame. Is there records or a database to find out more about what um, his level was um, or his certifications? I heard on one of the episodes that someone wanted to find a particular guy with a call sign and see if he would give up the number. Um, my dad passed away, and um, I think it would be cool to find out more about what he did Um and see if I could maybe get his same call sign. Thanks for all the help, and really appreciate the podcast. I'm learning a lot. Um, this is Rob, no call sign yet. Thank you. Well, Rob, first off, thank you for your call, and uh, it's really cool to see you want to follow your dad's footsteps there in the hobby. Uh, we'll get to we'll get to that in just a moment, but we'll go back to the top of your list. Rob's another listener uh, that we did connect on Facebook. Now you won't find me spending a lot of time on Facebook. I'm, I'm generally there trying to encourage you and other listeners to go listen to the program. But if if I get a message, I try to reply. And, and Rob, thank you for contacting me there and on the phone time phone line as well. Is there a glossary of acronyms? Wow, there pro yes, there is. There is. There's a huge glossary of acronyms. And um, I'm going to put a link to it on the show notes, in the show notes. And we could spend probably three or four, maybe five episodes on glossaries and acronyms and jargon and whatnot. So 
it's there. It's out there. We'll put it, put it in front of you. Maybe some of it will make some sense. And, and some of it still doesn't make sense to me. And what's so hard for me is that I do have some dyslexia. So the Q codes, I, I'll spin them around. I'll say them backwards every time. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll put you a list of uh, probably a couple of different places you can go and look to uh, to find the information about a glossary or find a glossary for you. Of course, the ARRL.org website has one. But uh, we'll, we'll get some more for you. All right, so you're talking about studying. We ta- we hinted on that just a minute ago with William. But uh, you downloaded an app, and you're not sure if it's still available or still viable. I think that the technician reset itself in 14, so it means it's good from 14 to 18. The question pools are good for four years. Your app should tell you that, okay? Now, I didn't study with an app, okay? The first technician, I, I actually studied four different manuals because over a course of 16 years, I put the test off. So I had to buy four manuals. My wife still laughs about that. It's okay. She's not listening either. Uh, you can buy a book from the ARRL, and it's a study guide. Generally, have a CD-ROM in there that's pretty good. It's what I use for my technician. It's about 25 bucks. Okay, we got them in the Photon Fo store, Photon Web store. If you want to check them out, uh, there's a there's a couple of different books you can buy. If you like reading a book, there you go. We've got your books covered. There are apps. You got a smartphone, iPhone, Android phone, it doesn't matter. Tons of apps. The apps are free by and large, and you can use those apps to study the question pool to take the test. You can take practice tests with your apps. Um, majority of them are free, and the people that use them like them. I didn't study with an app because I've only had a smartphone for about three months now. Um, is that the best way to do it? Hey, man, if it works and you're passing, do it. No. I just had some people throw tomatoes at me again. But, hey, you know, it's about growing the hobby. The, the, I believe that you're going to learn more doing it than you are studying it, okay? Haters is going to hate, right? I didn't use an app. I did use a book for the first test. When I upgraded my general, I went to hamtestonline.com hamtestonline.com I, I've spoken with those folks really nice people I've asked them to, you know, if they wanted to sponsor or be a part of the show they're really not interested they don't even have an affiliate code right now unfortunately because I'm getting ready to direct a bunch of people to their website if you go and you sign up and they give you a choice to tell them why you're there tell them the Photon Podcast since you maybe they'll want to come on board with us but I have found that the Ham Test Online website is by far in my personal opinion of 41 years, the best way to study. Oh, Kel, you got to pay for it. There's free sites that you can use. and you have to, There are. There are lots of free things out there that you can use. And I'm not saying they're not as equally on the same ground as Hamtest Online, but I am saying that for me, I signed up for HamTestOnline.com for my general upgrade. I spent 20 hours studying over a course of about two months I walked in, sat down at the testing session. In about eight or nine minutes, I was finished, missed one question. It was well worth my 25 bucks. It's, it, it works so well, and they, are, they, they believe so strongly that their product works every time that if you, you pay them for your service, you pay them for their service, right? You subscribe to it. You follow the study guidelines, okay? Technician is 10 hours of study. You pay them, I think it's 25 bucks. To take your to, to study for the tech test, which is the same that a book's going to cost you. You pay the twenty five bucks. You do your ten hours of study that they keep up with online. You go take your test and fail. They're going to give you money back. That's how simple it is. They believe in it. It works so strongly that they're going to give your money back if if it doesn't work for you. I think it would work for anybody, and I encourage people to use it because I like it. It worked for me. I'm subscribed to it now as a future extra testee, but I haven't, that might not have sounded right. (laughs) Anyway, um, hamtestonline.com. To me, it's the best money to spend for studying. If you don't want to spend money, don't spend money. Okay. A lot of people will take the question pool and they'll print it out because you get the questions with the answers and they'll mark out everything that isn't correct with a black permanent marker. So basically you're reading the question and then there's the only thing left with it is the answer. So you're just plugging into your mind. Hamtestonline.com. You're learning the material as you're studying the material. It worked for me. You may not like it. You may not want to invest 25 or $30 or whatever into it. That's okay. 
Okay. I'm just telling you kills personal opinion. That's what we're getting today. Hamtestonline.com is the way to study for your amateur radio license. Now, many op, uh, Rob talked about the different options to operate and he said texting, which, which we, we call digital modes and it includes Morse code. But, uh, what, what he's talking about and heard us talking about here on the program is when you connect your laptop or your desktop computer or even your Android phone or an iPhone with our uh, Nick from Pignology from a few episodes ago. Uh, you connect your computer to a radio with no Internet connectivity, and you can operate through your computer sending like text messages. You can also send pictures and videos and all those sorts of things. But ham is huge, man. You can also use your smartphone without a radio if you chose to, or your computer with Echolink. And that's basically you're using the Internet then. That's Internet dependent, so you have to have Internet connectivity. But you can use it without any radios. And uh, there's a group of friends of mine who have a weekly net on Friday nights doing that all over the nation. And uh, it's just pretty cool. I've been there a couple of times, but Fridays are terrible for me to get on the air. So that's one way. QRP, that's for people with lots of patience uh, who have a lot of time to uh, to devote to the hobby. Uh, QRP is low power. And most most guys on, on HF, uh, general class and above operators, they're going to be operating with a, with a a right at 100 watts. Okay, that's a standard radio has 100 watts in it. And, of course, we have higher limits than that. But QRP is somebody who's got uh, 5 watts, half a watt, a quarter of one quarter watt. Uh, very, very low power, and it's the challenge. You know, it's it's like uh, it's like Doug climbing to the top of a mountain and, and operating, you know, with with a thirty watt radio, a ten watt radio, and and trying to make contacts that way. Uh, it's it's just another way to operate. It's another another end of the hobby. HF, that's high frequency. That's um, not local, or it can be, but. That's basically talking as far as you can talk on the different bands and different modes. Rescue operations. We've talked about Aries and races. You can go back to episode one. That's where we start and uh, cover that. So, man, I mean, and this is just just a couple of different things. There's so many different options. There's a guy. I'm going to call him out. There's a guy that I really would like to come on the program who is a tremendous base of knowledge regarding digital modes and i'm going to try to i'm still trying to shame him into it but uh, we're, we're working to uh, to get him on because he could really enlighten us all by operating or talking about operating with the different digital modes um uh, whoa that was my i need to put some bearings in this chair all right ways to be involved in the hobby how do you want to be involved do you want to just talk to your local buddies make new friends in your local town you can do that do you want to be involved in emergency operations like back in episode one with Cecil where we talked about the Aries and the races responding to storms and bad weather, natural disasters, uh, things like that. Um, you, you, the, the Boy Scouts do a thing every year, the Jamboree on the Air, where local Cub Scouts and Boy Scout clubs get together and operate with local ham radio clubs. Uh, ham radio operators supply communications for all sorts of things like the Boston Marathon, bicycle rides, uh, the assault on Mount Mitchell is one that we do here locally. They even help with parking at a local Christmas music event. So, I mean, there's, there's all different sorts of things that you can, if you can think of it, probably ham radio either has been, will be, or is currently involved in that particular something out there. So, there's lots of things to do. If you're emergency oriented, if say if you're a volunteer firefighter, an EMT, something like that, you may be into the races and the Aries end of things, and uh, we'll put links up on the uh, the show notes for that. Uh, in your dad's call sign, uh, <clears throat> you can, if it's available, and you obtain the same class license that your dad had, get his call sign. Okay, you have to do a couple of different things, and I'll put some links up on the website. It's it's I don't want to say it's hard to do, but it, first you have to get licensed, okay? And then you have to get licensed to the same point that your dad was to have that call uh, if the call is still available. Now, where, how do you find that out? Well, the FCC has a lookup site. There's also a site that I have yet to mention that's probably the central hub of everything amateur radio on the Internet. And how did I fail to mention it? Well, I just don't go there a lot 
because I think the world revolves around me. And I'm just kidding. I, I just don't go over there a lot because I spend my time other places on the internet with other, you know, folks. And anyway, it's qrz.com. The letter Q, the letter R, the letter Z. dot com. QRZ is what you'll hear it referred to. Um, I just can't get used to saying Z. Sorry, Jeremy. QRZ.com is the place to go. You can look up call signs. You can have, uh, there's some swap meets there, uh, forums, internet forums and whatnot. So that's a good place you want to go look to. Uh, internet forums is another thing just to touch on here real quick. Rob, I hope those answered your questions, by the way. And the links I'll put up to, to about a vanity call or, or heritage call, we'll get that posted up there as well. And hopefully that'll help direct you in your your quest there um internet forums are a great place uh but you got to remember an internet forum is just like a local club you've got different personalities you've got some really good personalities and you've got some not so great personalities and uh the internet seems to bring out the worst in all of us because the guy that we're you know talking smack to can't knock our teeth out across the table because we're on the opposite end of the country um amateur radio is is a hobby of goodwill and there is a lot of that to be found in the hobby. But like everything else, there's some not-so-great guys and gals on there. And you just have to be careful, okay? Uh, QRZ.com is a great place to go. Uh, they have got forums there. There are other Internet forums that uh, you may or may not like better or worse. So you can you can look around there and, and find you some amateur radio. Just Google amateur radio forums. Or let's say that you're interested in the areas and races. You know, you're interested in trying to find out more about that. Type that in. Put that in Google. Aries races. Uh, Facebook is covered up with different amateur radio groups. I found. Uh, if you're into preparedness or something like that, you can type in preparedness amateur radio or ham radio forums. You'll find what you're looking for on the. You'll probably find stuff you didn't even know existed. Probably things that you wish that you didn't know existed now, on the internet. So it's all there. Okay, it's all there to be found. Uh, Buying Gear, again, main trading company, mtcradio.com is our show sponsor. They have new gear. They have used gear. They have an eBay store. Um, I'm going to leave eBay at that. Okay, I'm, I'm not a big fan of buying my amateur radio gear from eBay unless it's from a reputable dealer like mtcradio.com. But you can buy from their store. You can buy their used gear. They have a used gear page that you can click on right above the Photime logo on their website. And check that out. They also have the Icon Repacks, which is a great way to buy a radio. That's a radio that someone purchased, uh, decided they didn't want or whatnot. They send it back to Icom. Icom goes all the way through it, makes sure everything's okay, and then repackages it, and they have them up for resale at a pretty good discount. It's hard, hard to beat some of the bargains there. Uh, another place to look is an online classified at QTH.com. They have classifieds there. Uh, that's where I bought most of my gear. And it's like anything else. It's online. A guy's in Wisconsin. You're in Texas. You can't see it. You have to take his word for it. Buyer beware. Okay? If you can afford to buy new, buy new. If you can't afford to buy new, you're going to survive because there's a lot of great gear out there to be had. And a great place to connect with used gear is your local club. Okay? We're going to go back to John's call. Get in your local club. Find your local club. And uh, let the let the people that are there in your town help you get into this and move through this hobby okay i uh i could say a lot more i don't want to to really go in in i don't have any more questions and i don't want to just keep expounding on my personal opinions but i appreciate you listening and uh hey if you want to help i'd appreciate it you go down the bottom of every uh every blog posting there's a donate button i could use your help for real i mean i've got five kids single income you decide if you want to help i'd appreciate it it also helps me out when you shop in my Amazon affiliate store. I think it's a 4% commission. Somebody bought a really cool book about tyranny. <laughs> through the, And it's not in the store, but when you get in the store and you start clicking around and you get out in the Amazon, uh, out in the deeper water, and you purchase something, it, it, there's a little commission. I think it's 4% comes back. Um, so I appreciate it. We've got a great show sponsor. We've talked about them. I have a, a store as well that helps pay the bills for the, the hosting and whatnot here. And there's a donate button. So if you'd like to do that, I would appreciate it. I'm going to leave the question on the phone line. If you want to call, you've got more questions. You're new. I've just confused you more. Kel, you said that completely the wrong way. Call in. Leave the message there. We'll continue to address it. Got some more great shows coming up, guys. Thank you again for listening. I enjoy being here and enjoy 
sharing this time with you about the great hobby known as amateur radio. Till next time, guys, 73. Downloading, listening, and subscribing to Amateur Radio 15.com presents Bowtime, the other ham radio podcast. You can find our past episodes, web links, and more at Amateur Radio 15.com. That's Amateur Radio 15.com. Follow us on Twitter at Bowtime Podcast. And remember to visit our show sponsor, Main Trading Company, at MTCRadio.com. Till next time, 73s. Thank you.